Excellencies, uh, distinguished participants, welcome to our public forum today on Thailand after the referendum. Uh, I think we have a good uh, good turnout, and I look forward to the, the speaker's remarks. Before we proceed, I want to invite um, Professor Ek, Kansa uh, Patana, the Dean of the Faculty of Public Science, to, to uh, provide a few opening remarks. I want to say, first of all, that uh, this is a kind of an in-house panel, only to our professors. It doesn't mean that we, we try to invite Thamasad and you know, but they didn't, they were not available. So uh, afterwards, please don't give me a hard time about just to professors. And then I also, we also approach uh, uh, female professors and experts, but they were not available. So uh, no female today, but we've had all female panels before, so please don't come and tell me that there's a gender imbalance. Uh, we tried. Uh, so please, uh, John Eric, uh, the floor is yours. Excellency, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome all of you to the ISIS public forum on Thailand after referendum scenarios and prospects. Two years ago, when I was a new dean for the Faculty of Political Science, I was invited to do an opening remark for ISIS forum on reforming post coup Thai politics, issues, priority, and challenges. Two years later, the next constitution draft was already voted yes in the referendum, leading to a general election. That's why the topic today's ISIS forum is Thailand after referendum scenarios and prospects. In this context, I think we may now have more space to promote public understanding and conversation that are constructive and beneficial to Thai society by focusing at the Thai political prospect. Without constructive forums and, contribute to, uh, con and that contributes to broad exchanges of view and idea, it may be difficult to promote longer term political development and stability in Thailand. I know that many of you and your colleagues have been coming to ISIS Forum over uh, the years. These forums have covered a wide range of issues and discussion, including domestic politics, regional dynamics, and international implications. Today, our interest is on Thailand's domestic politics. What will happen in Thai politics after the referendum, especially in view of present and former constitution drafting com uh, committee and academic chains. Personally, I have a few issues after the referendum that I hope will be discussed at this uh, forum. Firstly, at socio-political level, Thailand has many constitutions. Can this new constitution bring about a political development and political stability in Thailand? Essentially, can these new design political structures and regulations shape political behavior of Thai people? Secondly, the question is about political regime change. In immediate future, which way is going to be the direction of Thai political development? Will it be more democratic or the democratization towards semi Democratic, uh, democratic regime in your perspective. Thirdly, the question is on the institutional checks and balances between elected representative and independent regulatory bodies for deterring corruption. At the same time, uh, these regulatory bodies have an excessive role with no accountability to popular vote. Lastly, I would like to uh, thank uh, all of uh, distinguished speakers from the Faculty of Political Science, Chulangkorn University, uh, Professor Dr. Subachai Yawakapad, uh, as a constitutional uh, constitution drafting commission, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Panitan Vatanayakorn, uh, Principal Advisor to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense. Assistant Professor Dr. Bandit Chanlod Chanakit, 
from the Department of uh, Government. Professor Dr. Sujit Bunbongkar, ICIS Senior, Professor uh, Fellow and former Constitution Drafter. And really last but not least, uh, Associate Professor Titinan Pong uh, Director of ICIS Thailand, uh, for being a con uh, moderator. Again, I would like to thank all of you for joining us uh, today. And now let's meet, uh, let's I turn the floor to uh, Ajahn Titinan. Thank you. Uh, this is a very clever way clever way to, to do uh, opening remarks. You know, we wanted to put him on a panel. He said, no, no panel for him. Uh, he's a dean, uh, so he gets to make a speech and then no Q&A for him. Uh, so those are very useful, I think, uh, guidelines. I think the issues that he has proposed and raised. Uh, I will say, you have the bios of the speakers. I'm not going to go into any depth or length uh, about who they are, but uh, as a preface, um, uh, you know, the curtain raising remarks, I would say this is the second referendum we've had. Second referendum. Uh, ten years ago, this week, we had a uh, military coup. Uh, it led to an August 2007 referendum. Uh, it was passed by a 57% uh, turnout, uh, approval rate uh, and a similar same percentage for, for turnout. And then it led to the election in December 2007, and then on and on we had uh, uh, crisis, polarization, turmoil, and now again we have another referendum, second ever in Thailand. Uh, this referendum is, uh, took place on the 7th of August. The turnout was uh, 59%, approval rate was 61%, which is uh, solid uh, numbers. Turnout 59% is you know, larger than most developed countries. Uh, even Hong Kong had a record turnout uh, last month, but it was below, it was, I think, 57, below 59. And approval rate of 61%, I think, is pretty convincing. So we want to uh, now kind of digest, dissect what this means for Thailand going forward. Uh, the election timetable now is on track. Uh, it looks like we'll have elections in the late 2017, possibly early 2018 at the latest. Uh, so we have now a lineup of speakers uh, from our own faculty here, and they are all the experts and uh, prominent in their own right. Uh, first, I will start with uh, Dan Subhachai. Dan Subhachai uh, is the, uh, one of the 21 constitution drafters, uh, and uh, he has been uh, involved with the charter drafting process all along. Uh, we've had some conversations uh, over uh, recent months, and uh, so I'll pass the floor to him. Uh, with a couple of questions, Ajahn, uh, are you surprised, first of all, by the, the referendum results, uh, the turnout and also the approval rate? And maybe you can share with us a little bit some of the dilemmas, anything that uh, sticks out for you now that uh, we're going through the drafting of the enabling laws. These are organic laws that have to come into place before we can go to elections. Uh, Ajahn, uh, Dan also was the dean of the faculty before Ajahn Ek. Uh, and uh, he's been involved with the ASEAN University Network uh, and, and on and on in ASEAN's biosets. Uh, please, Ajahn. Uh, thank you, Ajahn Titinan. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I will not now respond to uh, what Ajahn Titinan have put forward. Like, uh, I was surprised with the result of the referendum, because uh, I just want to look forward. Uh, and I would like to inform you that what, what will, what, what are going on now, and what will happen next. Uh, actually, uh, what we are doing now after the referendum have been uh, passed by the majority vote, uh, we have been uh, busy uh, amend the constitution according to the referendum. Uh, we have submitted to the constitutional court uh, on the first week of September, and now we are awaiting for the uh, decision of the Constitutional Court. If we have to uh, amend it again, 
then uh, it will the the, the, cons the interim constitution give us uh, 15 days to do that. So uh, we have to finish it up within 15 days and then submit it to the prime minister. Uh, with 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 that timeline, we will have the constitution promulgated. Uh, around the end of October, or the beginning of November. Uh, apart from uh, waiting for the decision of the Constituent Court, we have now, uh, we, we actually, after we know that the, con the draft constitution have been have passed the referendum, we asked uh, those concern, especially the, the uh, independent organization, to draft the law according to the Constitution. And uh, the first uh, organization that submitted draft to, to us is the uh, Human Rights Commission. And we have invited the Human Rights Commission to explain to us what they have in mind when they put it into the, the bill. And uh, after listening to the, the Human Rights Commission, we, we are now uh, preparing uh, the, this organic law. But we will have the session to invite uh, the party concerned to give a comment to the draft uh, bill that submitted to us by the uh, Human Rights Commission. We, we will do the same uh, if time allow for all 10 organic laws. Next, uh, on the 28th of September, if uh, you are interested in, in what will happen in terms of the, the, the election, uh, you can join the public forum uh, that will be held at the, the parliament. It will be open to all, but uh, unfortunately it will be in Thai. Uh, in, in that uh, session, we will invite the EC, the election commission, uh, to present uh, this draft, they, they submit, they, the EC have submit two draft uh, of the bill to us already. One is on the political party, and another one is on the uh, election of the House of Representatives. So uh, we will, on, on 28th of September, we will ask the election commission to like uh, to make a presentation of what they have in mind in terms of the, the draft bill and then uh, we invite the political party and, and others concerned to, to listen and also to make a comment uh, we will we, uh, uh, we plan that we will not say anything just listen and collect the idea. We also have uh, already invited the uh, National uh, Reform Steering Council uh, to meet with us and share with us what they think about the draft, uh, the draft law on political party. They have done that. Uh, one time already, but there will be another time and another time because uh, we, we, we just want to hear as much as we can. And on that first 28th, uh, we will, uh, apart from the political party, I think uh, we, we will invite other party to, to come and then uh, to share with us what they think about the political party uh, law that have been drafted by the Election Commission. And uh, 
as I said, that we will do, we will have a forum like this uh, for the 10th organic laws, if time allows. Because I said, if time allows, because we need to uh, finish the first uh, four law that concerning the election uh, in four months. So if uh, the, the draft haven't been submitted to us in, in, in due time, maybe we, we cannot uh, organize the forum like that. But if time allows, we will do it. And uh, just to uh, react to uh, the dean, uh, a concern on the uh, authority of the independent organization. Actually, when we, uh, this kind of public forum, uh, at least, uh, I mean the public forum that we will have on the 28th of September, we plan to do it for every organic law. So when we have that public uh, forum, it's time that we can listen to different viewpoint because uh, we, we always uh, receive a different viewpoint at different forum. Uh, in, in, in this public forum, we they want the uh, independent organization to be very strong and very powerful. But in another public forum, we have another idea. So uh, Ajahn have to tell me when I should finish, okay? Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I, we usually we, we, what we will do is that we just listen and then uh, things over that uh, what should it be because at the end of the day it will be the constitution I mean the law that draft by us so we have to to wait uh, every viewpoint and see what is good for the country at least from our viewpoint. Apart from that. Uh, from actually, we have done it already. We asked uh, the the poll, uh, like the, the university uh, poll unit, like the leader poll, uh, to uh, survey to get some idea from the people for some kind of some some uh, issue that we are not quite sure what should it be something that is quite new, like uh, shall we uh, have a membership fees for those who want to be the member of the political party? Because that's like uh, in, in UK, they have it. They even have different rate. Shall we have it for Thailand? So when we do the uh, survey, public opinion survey, we, we get some feeling that this is good or uh, this is acceptable for Thai people or not. Because when you look at other countries, uh, those practices is quite common. But when we want to do it in Thailand, maybe it's not acceptable for Thai people. So we, we use uh, this kind of the, the, the poll to, to check what, what shall it be. Uh, we also uh, use, we, we also ask actually uh, other uh, university poll to, to do something like this, at least to give us some opinion that uh, what shall we do. Um, we will uh, start uh, organize the public forum like uh, what we will do next week in the provincial area. We don't have much time, but we plan that uh, every weekend uh, for at least now it's in the plan maybe for four weekend that we will visit uh, the four region of the countries. And in one region we will visit two provinces and organize uh, this kind of public forum. But we will just uh, raise the, the issue that have been uh, proposed by the election commission or that have been uh, discussed in the public so that uh, sometimes uh, people in different regions have different ideas. So we'll gather all of this. So that, that is uh, what we have been doing and what we plan to do uh, to have uh, the organic law that we think 
suitable for our country at this time. And uh, actually, there are uh, for other uh, organizations, I, I mean, not only uh, the Constitution Drafting Committee. Uh, when I look at the, uh, maybe I can call it the, the roadmap, uh, after the referendum, uh, there are at least uh, 59 bills that have to be finished within uh, one year. The two bills that is very important uh, for the countries and, and, and also uh, this has to be done according to the constitution. This one is the, draw, the, the law on the uh, national strategy. This has to be done in four months. Another law is the, the law on uh, national uh, reform. This has to be done also in four months. Uh, there are law on the uh, national broadcasting and telecommunication uh, commission. This has to be done in six months. But this is not the, in the purview of the Constitution Drafting Committee, in the purview of others' uh, organization. There are laws that uh, we put in the Constitution that have to be done within eight months. And if this law haven't been uh, finished in eight months, according to the Constitution, uh, the head of that uh, organization must be removed and the new person will be appointed. Uh, so that, the first one is the law on the environmental and health impact assessment. The second law is on the uh, financial, national financial discipline. And the third one is on the, uh, the uh, promotion of the anti-corruption. So this three laws have to be done within eight months. Actually, in, uh, in the view of the Constitution Drafting Committee, we are quite uh, concerned uh, about another two laws. Actually, these two laws we are very concerned is the law on education because we have put forward in the Constitution that uh, we must have uh, a, a, a foundation to support those in need so that they can get uh, access to quality education. And this one has to be done within one year. Uh, the law on educational reform has to be done within two years. And the law on police reform has to be done within one year. So uh, for, for us and in my own viewpoint, uh, there are many things that we have uh, to do uh, before the national election. The national election, uh, as uh, mentioned by Ajahn uh we, we shall have the national election as the earliest, maybe October, and the longest, maybe uh, January or February of uh, the 17th. This depends on uh, many things, but like, uh, just, just for example, uh, just for illustration, like when we have the law on the political party already, if we can pass, if we can submit it to the National Assembly uh, within four months after the Constitution has been promulgated, then the National Assembly has two, two months to go, but which is about six months. And uh, when this law has been passed already, uh, in the Constitution, we need to, with the, the EC Commission will be seven, not five. So there will be a process uh, to get another two uh, EC members. 
and then they also have to reorganize their own uh, office. Uh, they have to be acquainted with new rules and regulation. Uh, so uh, this will take. Uh, we we want this process to be as smooth and as efficient as possible because the political, the politician, and the public have to learn at the same time as well. Otherwise, uh, you will not be able to to monitor what's going on. So this 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 kind of process is quite uh, delicate and quite tricky. So it it, it uh, we. Um, if we do, we do not do it right at the very beginning, then it will be very difficult to correct it later. So that that why we have the public forum. That why we have a public opinion survey. That why uh, we like to work <coughs> with the universities at least uh, to uh, give uh, to update what's going on in terms of. Uh, what we are doing. So uh, actually, they, they are more uh, to say and they are quite uh, detailed. I think I, I will uh, finish the first round at this point. So I think there's a lot of lawmaking ahead for you. Uh, but, but I think the election timetable you mentioned still October to maybe January, February 2018. So sometime, sometime late next year or early 2018. Uh, assuming that all the lawmaking and reforms are on track. Um, we'll come back to you, Kavitan, thank you very much. Now, let me come back to, let me go to Zhang Banitan. Zhang Banitan is a professor with us at the Department of International Relations. He has been the government advisor in previous governments, but now he's the principal advisor for the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, General Pa Wittbong Suwan, uh, Zhang Banitan. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, friends, colleagues, I'm very happy to be here, especially invited by my very good friend, Ajahn Tijinan, who takes no for an answer. Actually, I have to be in New York today with Prime Minister. As we speak, he's now delivering uh, the speech on uh, progress on Thailand, uh, on refugees, uh, which of course, uh, He's going to present, already presented uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, examples of how we committed uh, in this area in terms of uh, doing much more than most people know. We spent six billion baht uh, taking care of more than 200,000 uh, so-called displaced persons. Uh, we are regulating uh, with new uh, rules uh, to give them birth certificate. Uh, registration of millions of people. Uh, we are now beginning to uh, repatriate some of these uh, uh, people along Thai Cambodia, uh, Myanmar borders uh, with uh, UNSCR. So all of this will be delivered to your uh, office in the next few hours, I, I hope. Um, Thailand is a good example. Uh, but I'll, I'll touch on that later. Uh, but uh, of course, my students will be very happy if I go to New York, so I will not give them pressure. And some of these uh, students are also uh, take no for answer. They don't like to, to be postponed for the classes that we are teaching. Yeah. I'm teaching two classes. My dean is here, so I need to be very honest with my uh, real bosses who are these uh, students and my colleagues. Uh, I think I'll make three main observations uh, in a very short uh, uh, time and, and maybe uh, wait for uh, questions and uh, later. I think my first point is uh, when we are going to the referendum on the 7th, uh, I, I'm sure many of you uh, were just wondering what will be the outcome. I think before uh, September 7, there were at least four scenarios. Uh, uh, government offices, uh, uh, the press, you know, the political parties alike are betting on this four outcome. One uh, is, of course, uh, there'll be a vote no in a big margin. I think uh, that that's the first likely scenario predicted. Uh, a no, uh, a landslide no, you know, for, for both questions, referendum question, and uh, more importantly, the attached, the attached question. 
Second, a slight uh, small margin, but still no, not approved. Uh, referendum and maybe slightly even higher for the attached question, which is of course a mystery question, the NCPO question about the transition period. Uh, and these two first scenarios are, uh, are predicted by uh, many of our scholars, uh, our media, and, and many embassies uh, that are the most likely scenario. Uh, the, uh, the third scenario is that the referendum will be passed in a very small margin, and this is also quite popular among Governments, government officers, uh, that uh, maybe due to the popularity of the prime minister, uh, maybe due to the sentiment really on the ground, uh, there will be a slight, small margin, but still the referendum will be approved. Yes. Much less I checked, uh, predicted that uh, there will be a big margin with the landslide in many areas, especially on the second question, especially in many the so-called red shirt areas. <coughs> The margin is much more and narrow uh, on, on, on this. So, so this, I think, uh, coming to, uh, to, to that referendum day, my, my, my point is that what, what went wrong? What led us to, uh, to conclude for those three four scenarios without predicting accurately on, on, on this? Of course, the fallout of that referendum has been debated, has been analyzed, and, and I'm sure some of this uh, analysis will be uh, going on uh, for uh, many, many weeks. But of course, most are very shocked at the result, number one. Second, they're disbelieved. Uh, they even think that there's something must be wrong. Uh, there's some, uh, something fraud, something uh, not correct. And they began to blame, first of course, the military. Uh, but the military must be blamed uh, by not opening up space, uh, by not allowing people to be free and fair. And of course, the government is to blame. Uh, and later on, in the next, in the last few weeks, you have begin to hear that the people have to be blamed, the uh, electorate has to be blamed. I think that is very, very interesting. Uh, uh, much, much less is uh, those people who really concluded on the first three scenarios to be blamed. And admittedly, some of these popular uh, Facebook leaders began to blame themselves that yes, they were wrong. Yes, they were among themselves thinking, uh, uh, reading, sharing among very small population, not being on the ground, not being connected, not being accurately predicted. Uh, but of course still, uh, this environment reflecting a very still unsettled uh, uh, confrontation or maybe unsettled conflict that uh, has been uh, going on in the Thai society for the last decade or so. So I think the reaction is very, very uh, not surprising to many of us uh, that it's reflecting. But among those uh, who were very shocking, I think one uh, very good analysis uh, uh, that I like came up quite balanced in the Strait Times, uh, August studies, written by Titinan Pongsutira, uh, a new balance in Thailand. He uh, mentioned four takeaway messages. I think this is one of the most balanced. You know, analysis. I think if you don't read, uh, read it, I recommend it. it's a very good reading. You know, uh, number one, uh, the verdict. Uh, the verdict is not free, uh, but not that free and fair. But people know enough uh, to go to the poll. That's what he said. Yeah. If I, if I'm not, uh, can I just uh, just quickly? Uh, uh, second, you know, uh, uh, the vote on the uh, on the anti-corruption verdict is very important. And the election timetable, the roadmap. People wanted the roadmap. People wanted to see the election on the roadmap. And this is, of course, the roadmap has been committed you know, from the beginning. But none of these critical minds uh, believe that the military will be committed. Until these days, I think, until today. They don't think the military is committed to the roadmap. But the, the verdict for the electorate is very clear. And of course, mutual accommodation. People want compromise. And lastly, they want transitional mechanism uh, in place you know, during the transitional period. And it is something to do with the second question, the test question. So uh, I'll not go on, on for that, but I think re uh, read it. I think the reaction uh, will lead us to my third point. Uh, uh, what's next? What's next? I think uh, in order to handle the new balance, uh, 
I think อาจารย์ทิจินันพอที่เราคอร์เรกต์ดัตไทยแลนด์นี้แต่บาลานซ์ Prime Minister began to think about return of the equilibrium uh, openly uh, he made the first speech on this uh, at the Shanghai Dialogue uh, in June about return to the equilibrium uh, bring back the uh, accommodation in many areas uh, making Thailand uh, back on track I think I think that is very clear uh, uh, in the Prime Minister's mind um, I think uh, in this area I'll mention four key areas on uh, where do we go from here or where do the government in particular go from here I think number one uh, it's very clear that the government need to keep the bureaucracy alert uh, the government need to keep bureaucracy uh, clean more effective more functioning more responsive uh, this is very clear we are on the seventh list of the uh, 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 of the bureaucracy who have to be moved out from the offices by Article 44. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Minister of Justice mentioned last week that the eight uh, bash uh, is coming. And it's very clear that Prime Minister, the NCPO, the government is going after uh, the bureaucracy. Um, the bureaucracy needs to be more, more effective. And I think uh, more changes are coming. Superchai is handling that uh, in many laws and many le le legislations, and more importantly, some of these changes will be uh, included in the uh, national strategy for the next 20 years. So, uh, number one area for a long time, uh, you don't see uh, in the areas of you know, human trafficking, for example, IUU, for example, IKO, for example, land use, for example, energy use, for example. Uh, infrastructure investment, for example, the bureaucracies are working in tandem, hand in hand. No, they are not. They are in separate sales. They are in separate uh, in, uh, areas. Uh, the, for example, the in terms of illegal fishing, uh, the fishing department regulates only the fishing materials, fishing nets, but the port authority is regulating boats, but the police is also supposed to go after these illegal uh, uh, boats, but they are not able to do that because of budget constraints. So the Navy was going after uh, these illegal fish, uh, fishing boats. So you have four or five different agencies not working together, no more. One committee is created, one budget is created, one law is created. Uh, yesterday, the cabinet approved a new uh, uh, law relating to the center to operate you know, the illegal fishing Sanchon. You know, if uh, Sanchon has been in on the proposal table since 1993, the year 59 and I began uh, teaching here. Yesterday, it was finalized. Yesterday. It was and it will be put in a national strategy to be stitched in the next 20 years. I think it took the whole career, I'm four years before I retire, yeah, to, to see that law really putting in place. This is how Prime Minister is very serious about keeping this bureaucracy committed. Uh, I think the Director General of the Fishing Department has been removed by the Article 44 twice already. Two persons have been removed and the third person I'm not so sure how secure his job is, but uh, that is a big problem you know, for uh, any government. But this government has done more. Uh, I, I don't want to go on because Prime Minister already spent two hours, five hours, I think, uh, talking about this uh, in, uh, last week, uh, uh, causing a lot of stir among the press that uh, they, they have the press conference about two years of, you know, of government work and, uh, without any break. But uh, you could go into those details on how. I think that uh, area, the first area. Um, and the second area, keeping the economy going. I think the growth rate is important. I think you know very well uh, in Europe, in, in, in the US, uh, it's a big problem. Uh, uh, Thailand uh, uh, 4.0 is also uh, a big commitment from the government. We need to move into the new uh, area of productivity. 
but uh, what to do when uh, almost 50% of the Thai population is in uh, Thailand 2.0, you know, 1.0, you need to accommodate them too. Uh, how many people can move you know, from a very basic skill to a high skill is to be a big challenge. Uh, but of course, uh, certainly we have to move. Uh, so growth, uh, also reforms uh, in this area has been laid out very clear. It's less controversial these days on how we need to move. Now, uh, for the remaining uh, time, not only these uh, economic reforms have to be put in place in, the, in, the, in terms of law, regulations, uh, there will be a new separate law, if I am correct, uh, Ajahn not on national strategy, but on the Pateru, on the reform. The reform legislation will particularly look into these problems and, 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 and make recommendations uh, on how these uh, rules and regulations have to be changed. And I, if I'm not mistaken, there will be members of the uh, national strategy sit in the national reform uh, uh, in that law uh, that are still drafting. Uh, so there will be a connection between national strategy and national reform, right? am I correct? So uh, these two will be uh, going together. National strategy will be something guiding the administration. Uh, national reform is something to be guiding the legislation, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the next 20 years. So, so that is uh, the second area. And uh, now the government is committed uh, to look into uh, more day-to-day -day problems, uh, as you observed. Uh, Prime Minister is on location to see uh, the, the uh, agricultural problems, uh, to solve the agricultural pro problem, community prices, land use, uh, drought in many areas. Uh, uh, as you noticed, uh, there will be more regulations, uh, more uh, help on on hand, on, you know, um, um, uh, in many areas uh, as farmers are prohibiting to cultivate in certain areas, allowing in other areas. Uh, the land used is now handled by one committee rather than several committees. And the government is now creating a big land bank and, and putting all lands uh, holders, uh, military holders, you know, government holders, uh, and all different holders, including uh, violators of these lands, to be in one land bank and began to regulate how uh, this land to be used, how deeds will be issued to the community you know, to use the land in different, uh, in different uh, uh, types and models. I never seen something like this, quite massive. Uh, uh, I'm not so sure they can deal with two large land use like that. Uh, we have our own law, you know, uh, we would like to create new uh, 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 malls and, and shopping areas, I don't know. I, 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 but we need to listen to this uh, land bank now, I think, how to use this land, but this first time. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, going back to the keeping bureaucracy honest, uh, a lot more problems, Ajahn Sipuchai can tell you, uh, on how to make uh, education institutions uh, uh, straight, honest, uh, clean, good governance. Uh, these institutions are teaching good governance, but this NCPO, this government, and uh, discovering a lot of unusual practices in many education, higher education institutions. There are cases against them in many areas in terms of appointments, in terms of contractions, in terms of many, many activities, uh, uh, including our own uh, university. I, I don't need to, uh, to, to talk more, I don't think I can tell you more on what's going on with these professors. Very difficult to regulate professors who are also very strong, very vocal, and, and they command respect, they command a lot of uh, words. You know, uh, but it is the first time that government is going after these uh, teachers, professors, who creating universities, who are creating schools for themselves but not for students. As my good friend Somkia TDI uh, analyzed a few weeks ago at my institute, KTI, he said, the education system in Thailand cannot be reformed easily. We have uh, 17 ministers in 10 years, a minister of education, very short period. And rules and regulations are created for teachers to advance themselves, not for students, not for parents. Although parents are much more than teachers, but the teachers are more powerful in running the schools. We cannot pick the teacher. Parents cannot pick the teachers. The teacher pick themselves. 
you see. So all these will be challenged by Ajahn Subhachai, not my area. But uh, uh, that's the second area. Uh, 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 first area, bureaucracy on it. Second area, economy going. Uh, I, I'm just uh, a few minutes over. Uh, third is, of course, managing the political space. This is quite a challenge. Uh, uh, I think you notice this is a, we are now entering the election environment. The campaign has begun. I'm sure for those who are connected to the political parties, they are on the ground already. They are campaigning already. They are now looking for opportunities to switch parties already. They, can, they are negotiating you know, uh, already with their bosses uh, to run the next election. It's a must for them. It's a survival uh, you know, issue for them. Um, they are going to be uh, grabbing that space and campaign, uh, beginning, of course, Next month is a political month for Thailand, uh, uh, the October. So you will see more talks, more debates on this issue. But below the surface, underground, there are a lot more negotiations uh, going on on how to prepare uh, to run the election. Uh, they are very observant of Ajahn Subhachai's uh, uh, writings on the rules and regulations pertaining their you know, uh, career in the next few uh, months. Uh, they are also very alert if there will be an issue of setting zero, for example, uh, making them more clean. You know, for, but of course, managing political space cannot be done with the political party alone. Uh, you need, uh, of course, civil society, you need the people, you need uh, the NCPO, you need the government uh, to work together. Uh, so this is what the government uh, must do to, 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 to make sure they link with these people. And of course, without the media, the media is connected in this. According to the recent poll, they're the two big groups that people are very concerned. Uh, I put it politely. Yeah. But, the, the, but, 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 the, but the poll mentioned these two as troublemakers. Number one is politician. Number two is the media. But of course, you cannot do away with them. The, Politicians will come back as our leader. But the media are now engaging with the political uh, leaders, political parties, and now making spaces for them. So you need to work with them. Uh, on the 18th, uh, this week at Tamasa, uh, there's a very interesting incident at Tamasa. Uh, one uh, talk uh, relating to where do we go from here uh, was uh, held at Tamasa. Uh, on the uh, podium, there were two opposite uh, leaders, uh, one from the uh, uh, PDRC, uh, one from the Red Shirt. Uh, these two very popular leaders uh, attended uh, a class at King Pukpokau Institute a few weeks ago and began to converse, began to be friends, began to uh, engage. But interestingly, when they began to talk about where do we go from, from here, the audience began to challenge them. And in the end, be, uh, in the end it was a riot. There was clashes. <coughs> Quite interesting. I think this is what the challenge uh, to come, how to manage peace among these strong supporters. Not key leaders anymore. I think the key leaders, key leaders are now understand more or less what at stake, how to work together, here the mandate on the 7. But the people on the ground, judging from that Tamasa incident, have not uh, reconciled themselves in, in many ways. And they began to uh, come out. Uh, so I pose this question to you. Uh, in managing political space in the next few weeks, if there, if, if there is a riot, if there is a demonstration big, in front of the national airport, for example, uh, in front of the national government agencies, for example, in front of the embassies, for example, what to do, how to negotiate with them. It's not easy to negotiate with 10,000, 20,000 people we have experienced that. So my last area, of course, uh, is uh, engaging with the international community, which is the fourth point that the government must be committed. Uh, Prime Minister is now um, uh, working with the United Nations on the SDG successfully. He's now beginning to link uh, 
the SBT concepts uh, uh, with our own concept, the SEP, the self-sufficient uh, philosophy, and uh, is ready to push the G77, as you know, uh, to be committed uh, on these issues of how to really not leave anyone behind. The Brexit, you know, incident told us that if we leave someone behind, we'll be in big trouble. So Prime Minister is going to push this on the 23rd, uh, uh, when he passed on his leadership uh, of the G77 and China uh, to Ecuador, and he's going to also begin uh, to push more uh, here in Thailand when we held the uh, ACD ASEAN uh, Cooperation Dialogue in October with uh, 34 countries coming back to Bangkok for the second time in many, many years since it began uh, in early 2000. Uh, I think the Thai government, the current military uh, administration, is now, after the 7th of September, have room and ability to move beyond uh, domestic uh, areas to engage with the international community. The community that was very much uh, putting their guards against the military uh, administration, who wouldn't uh, in this day and age, you know, where more, uh, more and more countries becoming more democratic. Uh, the military uh, in the past uh, year or two have not received uh, the credit uh, they deserved. Uh, but now, with that mandate, uh, with that you know, uh, uh, clear direction uh, on the ground, I think uh, Prime Minister of Thailand in general can engage with international community in, in, in many ways we can. So in the end of this, we have to be put in a national strategy. In the end, all of this has to be implemented by Pachara, by civil society, by the government, and the people on the ground. If you cannot do that, none of us, super chai, none of us uh, will be able to see uh, the results if you don't make it stick for the next few years, if you don't engage with the people on the ground, as well as the international community. I will be surprised uh, to tell you uh, if I see big, com big, uh, big companies you know, from foreign countries to engage with the people on the ground. In Chiang Rai, in Nan, in Beitong, my hometown, 10 miles from Malaysian border, we have not seen any big corporations engaging with the people. I think that's what we, we needed in order to move Thailand forward. So I'll stop there. Uh, I think I'll pass on to you.